black girls gave me the most problems. I, I didn't, I, it wasn't a lot from white girls. Like a dark skinned girl, probably look at a light skinned girl like, oh, she thinks she's cute today because she wore it then. I like to get the blacks to accept me. Because I'm from the hood, I'm staying the same spot you is. I'm going through poverty just like you're going through poverty. My folks on food stamps, your folks on food stamps. I'm riding a bus to build, and so is you. So what makes me different than yours? And she Googled on the computer, why am I darker than my sister? What? It's okay, man. I came across this documentary and I want you guys to check it out. This documentary comes from the so SOA TV YouTube channel. I thought it was very interesting. I feel like this side of the conversation isn't heard enough. So I want to show this documentary just to give a perspective of the other side of the conversation, of the colorism conversation. So this is from the Exotico's perspective. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Black girls gave me the most problems. I, I didn't, I, it wasn't a lot from white girls. When my mom and dad would go to the store, they would come back to his car and a, a, a lady would write on a sheet of paper, you cracker lover or something like that. And, I get picked on more by black than I did any other race. I don't just choose one race, I just say I'm mixed. They kind of like make you feel bad. They they make you feel the tension. They don't kind of they don't just put it out there, they're not blunt about it. I don't want people sitting here just always down in white people like white people aren't the problem. Um, I, I walked into my Sunday school class and it said, no niggas allowed in the church. Like a dark skinned girl, probably look at a light skinned girl like, oh, she thinks she's cute today because she wore it then. How did that whole perception of you as a mixed person change when you came to America? How did people treat you here? I'm Terrence Flowers, known as the Mechanical Eye. I'm a videographer slash photographer and The Other Race is my first full-length documentary. The production of this film was inspired by race relations in America. A lot of times, people with multiracial ancestry are caught in the middle of race relations. We thought it was important to hear the stories about being multiracial straight from the source, which is the people themselves. We asked them different questions about the multiracial experience, and here are their answers. So I hope you learned something by viewing The Other Race. I certainly did. I would say I just identify myself as being African American, but at the beginning, when I was younger, I used to erase everything and put mix, and I used to get in trouble by my teachers. And they would always say, why are you putting mix on there? You're either, you know, black or you're either, you're black, basically. And so, um, I would have to say, back then I would say mix, but now I understand that I kind of have to just say African American because that's what society breaks it down to. Black, to be honest, because that's the side that I grew up with, so. Um, did, was you raised in a black neighborhood, um, black culture? Yes, I was. I was born in California, but I grew up in New York. So I was raised on my father's side of the family, and my father is Jamaican and Spanish. Did you go so. to black schools? Yes, I did. I went to PS7, PS132 in Queens, and then when I moved to Georgia, I did go to a predominantly white school in middle school, and then I moved to Atlanta and ended up at predominantly black. I identify myself with black and white because my parents, well, my mom is mixed half and half, she's black and white. My grandparents, that's why. 
I identify myself as black because my father is black. Were you raised with your father? No, I was raised with my mom. And your mom is white? Yes. So why would you identify yourself with black just because your dad's black if you was raised with your mom? Because my mom told me that I should always identify myself as what my father is. I grew up around not my Mexican side of my family because my mom moved to Columbus and she met her ex husband and he was predominantly his family was black so with him being in the household and my Mexican side of the family being in El Paso Texas I didn't grow up around them I grew up around a black household basically I'm multiracial so I don't just choose one race I just say I'm mixed or I would mark three things on whatever the choices were or I just say other there's no black people in our community. Right. I mean, I think that when I, and we're three years apart, so the only time we were in school together was elementary school. He, when he was in middle school, right when he was going out, I was coming in. And I almost think that worked better for me because he kind of was able to pave the way a little bit. But I mean, to count on one hand how many black kids were at our school that we went to, you might say four and three of those are mixed. So. Nobody was just full-blooded black that we grew up with. So, I mean, you really didn't have a choice but to gravitate toward, I mean, I, for me, it, it was the white girls. I, I wanted to be like, more like the white girls. I wasn't ever built like them. I wasn't skinny like them. I didn't have, you know, the Abercrombie and Fitch that they were wearing. I couldn't dress like them. We didn't have the means for that. Black, of course, because Personally, I don't know any Asian people because I never had the opportunity to meet that other grandparent who was Asian. And my mother never had the opportunity to meet her father as well. So she doesn't, she knows he's Asian, of course, but she doesn't know anything else about him. I identify myself as being black the most. Why? For the simple fact, like, I don't know, I guess, being around my white family so much, I feel like I don't have as much of a touch with my black side of the family. And later on in my adult years, I have been more in touch with them than I have with my white side of the family. I'm mixed. I'm not going to answer black no way. Okay, I'm multiracial. Multiracial? Yeah. Do you hang with one, one race more than the other? I mean, growing up on the South Side, you ain't got no choice but to hang out with one. So I'm consider myself black. Okay. If you put me in a category. Do you think sometimes how people carry themselves and who they hang with kind of helps define who they are? Like how they say birds of a feather flock together? Like if a, uh, let's say if a cop walked up to you, how you think he would look at you due to your demeanor who you hang oh, with? Oh, he's gonna look at me like he look at every other individual, especially if you're black. He gonna look at, I'm, I'm not gonna seg segregate you from different or you look just like black or white. I've had crosses burned at my house. I've had feces put on my car. I've had my tires slit. Um, you name it, it's been done to us. Um, his dad lives in Atlanta. And it was rough on him. It was rough on him. And you know, he's from Montgomery. So when I went to go meet them, I was petrified. Cause I was like, you know, here, you, here it is. You're bringing a woman, a non-black woman to your family in Montgomery to want to let them know that we've already got married and we're expecting our first child. Very difficult, very difficult. With open arms, but at the same time, when you are open with open arms, when you step inside the front fold, it's more like we pick and choose who we want to be friends with. So being that I got a, a white mother from the outside looking in, you wouldn't know that she's born Mexican, but from the outside looking in, she looks white. So being the subject from the black folks is all, oh, you got a good mama. But being growing up in the hood on the projects, that's exactly what it is. So growing up black was easy at times. What about your white side, you tell me? Don't know. My little sister, uh, she asked why we're complete opposites. Cause she literally does not understand that. She's 14 and she Googled on the computer, why am I darker than my sister? She Googled that? Literally. Did she see a problem with her being darker than you? She used to. 
I don't know if you still do. Play it. It's okay, man. It's okay. Um, well, my sister and I, um, we have different skin tones. Um, I also have a brother as well. They, they both are the same color. They're like a lighter color, I'm the darkest. <clears throat> so what ended up happening was every time when my sister and I would argue, she would say, that's why you're not, you know, mom's child. And I was like, what? And she would say, yeah, you're too dark. Cause she, she looks, you know, more on the white side. So I used to cry and go to my mom and say, mom, um, am I, did you ever adopt me? So I actually made her show um, her my birth certificate and everything, it got that bad. My mother caught a lot of slack from my father's family, and that used to kill me. It made me not want to be around them. I mean, it's the little things. Like, they would tell my mom that she couldn't cook, you know, that they didn't want to come to the event to our house. They didn't, uh, when we would come down to visit, you know, they would always put us in the position where me and my, uh, me and my younger brothers and my mom will be in like one room and they'll be off, you know, partying and talking with my father. Yeah. The women, it's like, you know how the women and the men will always split up and they all do their own thing. It's like my mom will always end up staying at home with us. People asking my mom if, she, if I we were adopted or, you know, like people, us growing up in either all black neighborhoods or all white neighborhoods, you were known as the little mixed kids or you were known as, you were not known as black or you were not known as white, basically. It was just, you were, you were known as mixed, but when you go outside, it's like, people don't think mixed people can do this or as far as doing hair or as far as playing a sport, they don't think you could do it as well as, you know, other black kids or other white kids. Like me and my brother will both have to experience that growing up. Well, to be honest, um, I was adopted by my father's sister. So I grew up on my dad's side of the family. I didn't grow up on my mom's side of the family. So that's, your, that, that's your black side? Yes, that's my black side. That's the side I grew up on. So everyone would always ask, you know, with my adopted mom, they'd be like, is this your daughter? And she would be like, yes, this is my daughter. And, you know, sometimes it would get to a point where she would have to say, yes, I birthed her. No questions asked. You know what I'm saying? Because people would come at us all the time asking, is this your real daughter? Is this your real daughter? When I was in New York and my grandma took me to school to get enrolled after I came from California, a lady actually ran up and asked her if I was her real granddaughter. So I just started talking to my grandparents and the things they told me about, you know, their interracial join. They got married in Canada because it wasn't accepted here. It was, you know, illegal. And my grandma was basically emancipated from her family because she fell in love with a black man. And um, her dad is actually like a founder of John Deere. So the fact that, you know, she endured that just because she was in love, I, you know, I have deep respect for her. So they went to Canada, they got married. I'm sure whoever married them isn't alive anymore, but they've been together for a long time. They've been through a lot together and they overcame what was, what seemed to be the wrong thing. So they've been together for 50 years now. They still love strong, still happy. Of course they argue, that's what old people do, but they love each other and they overcame it. Uh, I don't look the half Mexican I am. I couldn't tell you why. I guess it's my dad's genes. Yeah, strong genes. Yeah. But but um, does your does your mixed side does your mom's side of her family her 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 mom and her dad or her uh, sisters and brothers do they accept you? Yeah, they all accept me. Take me with open arms. Me and my brother. Um, I have some hardcore Mexicans in my family. They look straight like Mexicans. Um, well, I mainly I mainly grew up grew up around my mom. So most of my mom's family is all white, like my aunt and them, and then my, all my cousins. Are so it was no problem with the, with the in laws or Granny. Granny accepted you as you were? Yes, my, gr my grandma did. I'm not sure about my great grandma. Black girls. And what was the main thing they used to say? Stop trying to act black, stop trying to be something I'm not. Um, that I should act more like what I look like. 
it's just it was it was pretty disturbing. <laughs> black girls. Black girls. Yes, black girls in particular. They would get upset, like, oh, who's this light skinned, long haired girl? And I'm like, I'm cool. And then once they know me, it's, it's a little bit more, you know, they're comfortable, yes. More problems in the black neighborhood because they was, they just assume stuff about white people, like, you know, it's, like, I guess more, I'm not saying more white people are used to seeing mixed kids, but black people, it's just like, they automatically assume, oh, your mom, your mom must can't cook, or they just, it's random stuff that you assume because my mom is, she looks white. As a child growing up, it was more like to get the blacks to accept me. Because I'm from the hood. I'm staying the same spot you is. I'm going through poverty just like you're going through poverty. My folks on food stamps, your folks on food stamps. I'm riding a bus to build, and so is you. So what makes me different than yours? So therefore, you get ridiculed by a lot of people that just look at you from a different perspective because my mother is white. So they automatically assume that I had better things. I got better shoes, which is not, I bought my first, brand, my first name brand shoes in ninth grade. And I bought them by myself. Um. I know people used to try to fight me all the time because they thought that they intimidated me because I was mixed. Who are these people? I'm not sure the names. Black race. Oh, they were black. So black girls? Huh? Mm-hmm. So black girls wanted to fight you because you was mixed? Yes. A lot did, of times. Did they say you was stuck up or something or you thought you was better than them or they just didn't like the way you looked? I'm not sure. I never had a reason, like a legit reason why. It just always would happen. Did it ever turn violent? Yes, plenty of times. It was just a couple of us mixed kids. It was a couple of them, but we had to deal with white kids calling us names. So, so you, so basically, here it was mostly uh, most of the people I've interviewed here. They got a lot of ridicule from blacks. Being a biracial person in Germany, oh, you no. caught it from whites. Yeah. So how was it? Like, What's some of the worst like, thing that you can remember people actually saying to you or calling about you? Calling you a nigga? Can I say it? Yeah, you can say it. Oh, yeah, calling you a nigga. And other words that I can't really, like, I can't really um, translate. The race I had the most problem with would definitely be the black people. I don't know why. I mean, I went to school just thinking, hey, it's school, this is where I'm coming to learn. But I guess it's something deeper and people always bring up the whole slave thing, but I feel like that's irrelevant at this point because, you know, your ancestors lived through that, but you can't really say the whole brown paper bag thing and, you know, be mad about it because at the end of the day, we both went through the same thing. So I feel like you can't discriminate against your own race where well, you shouldn't. And people still do that today. Black people were more accepting of me and my sister. Um, it just came to the point of where, when a disagreement came upon, that would be the only time they would ever call us out. Nigger, for one, um, they called me a mutt a lot. I never knew who the mutt was until I got maybe into middle school. Mutt, wet back. Even though we're not Mexican or anything, I guess that's a Mexican racial slur. Me being German, I've, I'm always a Nazi. Um, mafia for being Italian. I've had people call me a mutt. I've literally had people like, whenever, let's say, me and another student got into a disagreement about something and they got into the name calling. They would have skipped straight past, nappy headed, whatever, and go straight to, you're a mutt. You're nothing but a mutt. I've been called a mutt, a bitch, a hoe, cause I was light skinned. I mean like there, there was no reason, not that they can name anybody I've slept with, but I was a hoe. Protecting my younger sister's my job. Now my older sister was a thug. We ain't even had to worry about her. She a thug. She was gonna do what she wanted to do. But the thing about myself, older sister was was when she came home from like eighth grade. I never forget it. She cut all her hair off. My sister had long hair. She cut all her hair because four black girls told her she wasn't talking. She wasn't black enough, so she cut all her hair. Off. So that right there just it enrages. It's more of a problem. Personally, I hate the word niggas. I've sat and I've listened and I've heard like. We're so used to saying, hey yo, my nigga this, my nigga that, my nigga this, uh, free my nigga, 
help my nigga. Nigga means ignorant black person. I went to an all white school when I was real young. Like um, maybe kindergarten through third grade, all white. Like me and my brothers were the only black kids there. And um, I remember going to ask my mom what a nigga was. Cause I never, they, they called me that and I never knew what it was. that we're snobby, that a lot of people that I've met have said, I used to think that initially you were a but really you're so sweet. And people just automatically assume that we think we're better than everyone else. I think I could take everybody's boyfriend. I like everybody. I sleep with everybody. I talk to everybody. I'm stuck up. I think I'm all that, like, it, Stupid stuff. It was soft. Automatically being about racial. And I appreciate soft. you saying that because, like, from a man's point of view, most of our interviews have been with females, but that's the first time. And I figured, me just guessing, I figured that was, was going to be one of the things that um, a, a man would say. So I'm glad you said that. It was okay. People just assume that, huh? Automatically, you're going you to get assumed that you're soft because you're light skinned. And I don't know where that concept comes in because you're darker, you be like more harder. And I don't know where that comes from. Every time. Like, for instance, my sister has a different dad, but she has different hair than me. So they will always be like, well, you don't need no perm. You ain't gonna get no perm because you got <laughs> white people hair, of course, which is, you know, fine texture hair. And then, so I was just be like, well, I mean, I can't help that I had this type of hair. I gave you that hair. Of course. I think that people think that we think that we look better that we are able to get further because we have kind of a neutral skin color. We don't have to kind of fit into a certain mold. So I think that people are always judging us based off of that. When in all actuality, I feel like it's made me a better liar, I guess for, back, for lack of a better term. Because like I said, it helped me to create an image for when I'm, whenever I'm in front of a certain group of people. We're either too mean or too goofy. Like, personally, I feel there's no in-between. <laughs> there is no either or. Not that I know of. I have ran across one girl in high school. She did confront me, not like facially, but she did over a message and was like, you know, Back in high school, I used to think you were stuck up, this is that in the third, but I've actually had conversations with you and I see that's not who you are. And I do want to apologize to you for thinking that, for even having that thought in my mind. I thought that was pretty cool from her. Well, in Germany, they don't really have any, not that I know of, you know, you just get caught nice, but whoever hang out with you, that's who you hang out with. They cool with it. But I think here in the United States is usually the fact that you stuck up you feel like you better than other people. I've seen stuff coming down on the Mexican race and culture, such as Donald Trump. I remember a few weeks ago he stated something about we shouldn't let uh, people come over the border and whatnot. And I feel like he was stereotyping. He can't speak for every single, even if they're illegal, immigrant that comes over and do bad things. I feel like everyone deserves a fair shot. I don't think him would give everyone a fair shot. I wanted my hair to be like bone straight and I used to watch like mu music videos of the girls with the long straight hair so I thought that if I got a perm my hair would be like that. So my mom was like no I'm not giving you a perm because your hair is beautiful we just have to find someone that knows how to do your type of hair. So um, long story short she, I kept begging her so finally she went and got me a perm and the perm actually damaged my hair even more and it didn't lay as flat as I thought it was gonna lay. I thought I could just wash it, blow dry it, and it'd be straight. I still had to blow dry it, and I still had to straighten it. So I was like, there was no point of me even getting the perm. Change the way I talk, the way I walk. <laughs> yeah, I change the way I talk, the way I walk. Yes, more slang. Um, Give me some Southside slang. <laughs> Give me some 
from Southside Columbus some slang words? Um, I don't know. Most of the words around here in Columbus are kind of irritate me more than anything else. They've, uh, like they were flea. <laughs> I wanted to be white and blonde and have blue eyes like my like some of my friends. You really want to be like me. <laughs> In retrospect, now, how do you feel about feeling that way? Um, now? Just looking back, of course you can't change, but looking back, how do you? I mean, I think if I would have, I don't know, maybe if I would have been taught a little bit more about self-worth and not caring about what other people say, I would have like handled it differently. But now I'm kind of, you know. How far did you ever go to fit in? Oh Lord. Did you dye your hair? Did you dress white? Yes, I done put relaxer well, in my hair before, and I don't even have the type of hair to put relaxer in. Like it broke off. I had was it that the dyed that, blonde. that was just to try to fit in. You had dyed blonde. Well, yeah, I wanted to have straight hair. My hair was a lot curlier back then. One thing that really helped me push down the uh, negative stereotypes was just falling into sports and I man I played basketball every day and I practiced from sixth grade till twelfth grade basically an hour a day and I was exceptional and aside from that I was very quick so playing uh, football and track and whatnot and that helped break the ice with a lot of people um, who otherwise would have had some negative words for me they wanted me on their team sports does sports and basketball is a, a team team type sport and being the only you know I'm not too dark myself but uh being the you know I was the point guard and whatnot so I was able to kind of direct the team and but I, I do know what my sister is saying there were friends who I had whose parents they wouldn't let me go in their house and let and, and they wouldn't definitely not let me go if they weren't there at times they would open the door once the parents were home feeling that maybe we brought some type of negative energy or something that's going to cause their kids to get caught up in negative things, you know what I'm saying? My oldest daughter, um, very light complected, had a migrate of hair, but she was real curly. When we moved off post into the civilian sector, she had a really hard time. Um, she came home one day and her hair, she cut off all her hair. And I was asking her, I said, why'd you do that? And she says, well, mama, she says, the black girls say I'm not black enough. The other girls say I don't fit in, so I'm trying to fit in. So a lot of times what people don't realize is biracial children have a really hard time finding their own self, finding their own identity because you've got some that do not accept them as being black. Now, when my son walks out the front door, he's a black man. If I was around white people, I had to be white. If I was around black people, I had to be black. Um, or whoever it was at the time, I felt like it, it made me a better liar because yeah, I had to act however the people around me were acting in order for me to be socially accepted. I think, to be honest, it was my skin and my hair because in New York, we wore uniforms. So it wasn't the way I dressed because I dressed just like everyone else, you know? And um, I think, to be honest, it was my hair because a lot of times, like, your hair isn't real. I bet you get perms and I bet that's weave right now. And sometimes, like, it would break me down to a point where I would be like, you can touch my hair if you want to. Like I would, I would let girls stick their hands in my hair just to prove that it was mine. Oh man, come on man, the haircuts, the clothes, the talk game, the swag, come on man. I'm trying to fit in with everybody else, I'm gonna do exactly what everybody else is doing. You got parts, I want parts. You got curl, I want a curl. You got your pants sag, I don't want pants sag. We'll turn them to the back, I'm gonna turn mine to the back. Did I ever find myself doing things to be accepted? Um, I would try to, talk a little differently and I would ask my dad. My dad lives in Atlanta. So I would try to get the newest shoes to fit in. And I remember I went to E.W. Oliver and there are these new Nike shoes that came out and they had like the stitching of the color of, you know, our school. So I got those shoes. I was like, dad, these, school, these shoes are real cool. So can I just get them please, you know? And so he bought them for me. And I was the talk of the town, you know, oh, those are cool shoes. There are school colors, everything. But at the end of the day, you know, you're not gonna fit in just because your shoes, you know, if you're light skinned or because your hair is like this. So I tried to do little things like that, dress a little differently, talk a little differently, but it never really helped. I think that when it came to my weight, yes. I mean, I never went to the extreme of like wanting to change my hair color or, anything like that, but definitely, you know, there 
they're skinny, you know, for the most part. They don't, I mean, they're shapely nowadays, but when I went to school with them, it was just, you know, I'm, I'm too big. I'm too big for that. I also developed a lot earlier than everybody else. And I mean, some of the girls' moms didn't want them hanging out with me. They felt like that I was promiscuous or I was gonna make their kids do something wrong. Um, when I was in elementary school, I used to have like really curly long hair. So, and then I would look around and see all my friends, they have perms and stuff like that. So I would get a perm just so I could fit in and have straight hair because I hated having curly hair. What are some things you, you think that are advantage to you with you being biracial? I speak two languages. Fluent. Well, my English still got its little perks here pretty, and there. You speak pretty good English. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, because I know people that have been here for a long time and their English is worse than mine. But I do have my difficulties with certain words, so when I try to read out loud, I, I have to ask people. But I asked and I learned, and that's how I... Well, uh, say something, say something in, in, in German for the camera. Like what? Just say, how you doing? It's a nice day, something like that. Something real simple. <laughs> uh, hello, we get... Well, I get to celebrate Christmas twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, um, my grandma, uh, she actually did the tradition when she moved to the United States. She wanted to celebrate Christmas on the 24th because it's the 25th in Germany. 25th before, here too, right? Yeah, but it takes a little, I think Germany time, they're ahead. Yeah, they're they're ahead. like six or eight hours ahead or something like that. So she wanted to celebrate it here on the 24th. But she also did it because she knew that the mixed kids had Christmas with their other family. So we celebrate. Christmas with my grandmother's side on the 24th and then Christmas with the other side of the family on the 25th. I mean, the only kind of advantage of being biracial is you learn more culture about different cultures, whether it's black, Hispanic, Caucasian, any of that nature. And another advantage is either skin type or hair color. You feel my hair might turn out. I got good health. Like, I don't get sunburn like most white kids with. But I don't get razor bumps like most black people do. I don't know any Asian people or know any foreign people, so I don't know any other languages, and I don't eat no like, other yeah, food. Eat Asian food. No. I mean, hibachi or... <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, not speaking about anyone else except for myself, what I think is easier for me is um, I like the fact that I can wear my hair curly and I can wear it straight. I like the fact that um, my hair doesn't take forever to grow, but you know, it, it does grow pretty pretty quickly. Um, just, I would say fitting in to both because white girls, you know, they love you just because, I would say because of my personality, not because I'm light skinned or anything like that. And my best friend is dark skinned and we just, we make jokes about us being the complete opposite and how we together would make the perfect girl. So she's light skinned, I'm dark skinned, she has a big butt and you know, all this stuff. So we just make jokes about it and that's when I was saying, you know, in high school, I found my place because people were ex more accepting of me. Having two different cultures in your life, having, um a mom who loves to cook Mexican food, you can try new foods. Uh, it's still foods to this day she cooks new that I've never had before. Um, a new ear for music, um, just a lot of stuff. Also with the black side, the the the, the, the cooking is, is soulful. You like the, food, don't the, you? The food, uh, <laughs> the music. I love, I love hip hop music more than I love Latino music. Um, I would just tell them, you know, love the skin that you're in. There's nothing wrong with being biracial and that, um, you know, if anybody has a problem with the skin that you're in, then you don't, don't retaliate to it or act in a certain way. Just be yourself. You know, it just, it would be nice, to be honest, if people would just automatically accept you for who you are and then get to know whether you are snobby or not. 
You know what I'm saying? Instead of just automatically assuming that because I'm mixed, I'm snobby. Because I'm not. Not to judge someone by how they look because you never know what they've been through and how they really feel inside. It's a beautiful culture. Period. It's a beautiful culture. Whether you, whatever ethnicity you might have in you is beautiful. Whether it might be black and white, maybe Asian and mix, Mexican, might be Jamaican and white, whatever the case may be, however you mix, is it's a beautiful thing. Just know where you're coming from. Don't just learn one aspect. If you mix, don't just stick to being black. Don't just stick to being white. Know all of it. Be whoever you want to be, that's how I am. It's just like now I realize, like, don't care what anybody else thinks because other people's opinions don't really matter. So they're entitled to their own opinion, but you shouldn't let anything affect you or bother you because then it really will affect you later on in life. You don't have to identify with one side over the other. You can just be you. And whether that's you taking on more attributes that people assume are white or more attributes that people assume are black, because there's always, you know, this is what white people do, this is what black people do all the time. Just be yourself and be yourself and be great to everybody. You don't have to identify with one thing. For the biracial people out there, I would just tell you, have confidence in yourself. Don't ever let anybody tear you down or tear down your confidence. Embrace your individuality and, you know, the difference in you because you're beautiful just like everybody else. Man, we're all on this earth together, man. And regardless where we're born, regardless what our upbringing may be, we share so many things in common. We can't let the pettiness of a different complexion or a different shade separate the true essence that enables each and every one of us to wake up. We got to embrace the things that connect us instead of the things that divide us. So if there's one thing that I would like to tell everybody is just look deeper and look past the, the, the blinders that we may have been wearing, the veil that we've been moving around this world in and see the connection you share with one another. Make sure that they know that you come from great stock. You know, if you're, you know, know your family history, not know just the, not know just the generalized black history, but know that your, your grandmama did this or your great grandma did this and they did great things to know where you come from. Just be yourself. You're gonna have people talking about you to the day you die. Like, they'll directly target one race more than they would the other. But it's not really about race. It has its advantages. It has its disadvantages. Um, but you're lucky, I tell you that, because you got the best of both worlds.